Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of What is in the Night Sky this month. Tonight, I'm gonna be taking you through a beautiful tour of the night sky in the month of September. We're gonna head out past the reaches of our own solar system and we're gonna visit several deep sky objects and then we're gonna bring it back closer to home and see what our nearest neighbors, the moon and the planets are up to. So as always, let's buckle in and see what's really out there. So for this month, we're going to stay within the realm of our own solar system, and we're gonna see what the moon and the planets are up to. Venus is easily seen in the west about 15 minutes after sunset, and it's joined by a gorgeous crescent moon to its lower right on the fourth, and then to its left, on the 5th. Now Saturn and Neptune reach opposition this month, so we're going to quickly skip Saturn and Neptune as we're going to look at this opposition and this phenomenon a little bit closer and in a bit more detail. So for now, we're going to skip on to Uranus. Uranus is now rising before midnight, but it is best seen in the early hours. It remains within the same binocular field of view as the Pleiades and Taurus and will be closest on the 1st when 5 and a quarter degrees separate the two. Jupiter and Mars also start in Taurus, but Mars moves into Gemini on September 5th. Both are brightening, but at magnitude negative 2.4, Jupiter far outshines the red planet. The last quarter moon hangs above Jupiter on the 23rd and then above Mars on the 25th. As for the smallest planet, Mercury, it can be seen hovering over the eastern horizon 15 minutes before sunrise for most of the month. You'll find a thin crescent moon four degrees to its left on September 1st. And for the moon, it'll be new on the 3rd, and a full harvest moon occurs on September 18th. Now, I mentioned Saturn and Neptune do reach opposition this month, so we're gonna dedicate a bit of time here to talk about these two beautiful planets. Both Saturn and Neptune reach opposition this month with Saturn being first on the 8th at magnitude 0.6, and it's much brighter and easier to find than Neptune, but it is actually a little bit fainter than it would normally be compared to other oppositions. The reason for this is because its rings are nearly edge on to us. When the rings are wide open and facing us, they're able to reflect more light. But when the rings are closed, less light is reflected and the planet remains dimmer. All the same, the planet is unmistakable as it shines with a bright pale yellow light that helps it to stand out from the fainter background stars of Aquarius. Neptune is not so lucky. It reaches opposition on the 20th, but glows at a relatively faint magnitude 7.8. It's currently 2 degrees north of the stars 27 and 29 Piscium, and is noticeable thanks to its steady blue light. So now that we've discussed the planets, we're going to travel far outside the reaches of our own solar system, and we're going to look at a nebula that is very popular amongst amateur astrophotographers. It is arguably one of the most popular and most photographed nebula in the night sky, and it goes by the name the North American Nebula. Also known as NGC 7000, even though it lies very close to Deneb and Cygnus, it is a challenging target for naked eye and binocular observers. However, its distinctive shape is easily identifiable in images, making it a popular target for astrophotographers. Beautiful narrowband images with hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur emission data, you can see that these stars are tearing away at the hydrogen gases, creating beautiful walls and pillars of dense hydrogen molecular clouds. The great thing about the North American Nebula is that it is fantastic for all types of astrophotographers. You can see this nebula presented beautifully in very wide field Milky Way images, or you can see sections of this nebula captured through longer focal length telescopes. The next stop on our list is not a nebula, but it is a beautiful open star cluster, one of Charles Messier's M39. M39 is a fine open cluster that can be found star hopping north from Deneb. It's visible to the naked eye under dark skies and takes on a triangular shape when observed with binoculars. Telescopes show a sparsely scattered cluster with a pair of stars at its center. The last two objects on our list tonight are also star clusters, but they are not open clusters. They are gorgeous globular clusters, two of the most prominent in the night sky. Messier 2 and Messier 15. Messier 2 is a bright globular cluster visible with binoculars, and it's located just 5 degrees north of the star Saddlesuit, the brightest star in Aquarius. It can be detected with binoculars, while a telescope with low magnification will show a large bright core. 
Messier 15, on the other hand, is very easily found within the same binocular field of view as Enif, the star in Pegasus. Messier 15 also shows a large bright core with some resolution being possible at magnifications of 100 times or more. A nearby 6 magnitude star can be used for focusing. And I know I always mention this in our videos, but if you do have the chance to view a globular cluster through a large telescope, please do so as it's a magnificent sight. Nothing beats the view of a large, beautiful globular cluster through a large telescope. All right, so that is our tour tonight. Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you've ever viewed or photographed any of these targets that we've talked about tonight, let us know down in the comments. Let us know what kind of equipment that you use to do so. We love to hear back from you guys. If you have any questions, also let us know down in the comments and we will be more than happy to assist. My name is Tegan. Thank you so much and clear skies.